Hello, I'm Kyle and this is Travis and welcome to Chain and Sprocket 101 here at Chaparral Motorsports. It doesn't matter if you're a racer, if you're just in the trails, riding your dual sport, your bike or your vehicle can be geared differently to your performance needs. Now, not only in the dirt, but on the street as well. If you ride a sport bike, if you ride a touring bike, if your motorcycle has chain and sprocket or even a belt, changing the gearing can make a big difference. And it's important. I mean, I ride the track a lot, and depending on which track you go to, your bike can be geared differently. Glen Helen versus Milestone, totally different tracks. You would gear down at Glen Helen, and you would kind of gear up at Milestone. We'll explain that in a second. So why would you want to change your gearing? Well, a lot of these bikes come from the factory, set up to get a certain mile per gallon or to hit EPA emission yeah. standards and things of that nature. Now, a lot of times they're a little bit doggy on the bottom end, but they have a really nice top end. So it's really set up for cruising speeds if you're looking at a bike that was made to ride on the streets. Most dirt bikes are geared fairly neutral from the factory, meaning if, if you do take it to a dirt bike track, you might want a little bit more bottom end, which means you'd add a couple teeth to the rear. Versus going to the desert, you might want a little bit more top speed, which means you'd bring down the teeth in the rear. Now, when we're talking about changing your gearing, it's about changing the size of your front and rear sprocket to get the ultimate performance that you're looking for. That's your gear ratio. So there are calculators online that will give you the specific gear ratio if you give them the front wheel, the rear wheel, and your chain link. So what you wanna do is, depending on what you're riding, you want the, the best performance gear ratio for your vehicle. Now there's really three ways to do it. You've got a mild change, you've got a medium change, and you've got a relatively drastic change. The mild change would be going two teeth up in the rear. That's gonna give you better bottom end, and it's gonna take a little bit off the top end, but not a whole lot. No, it'd give you a little bit more punch out of the corners. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit more dramatic, you'd go one tooth down in the front. That's gonna be the equivalent of going three teeth up in the rear. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a happy medium of that next step. So what us desert guys like to do, it's kind of an inexpensive way to gear your bike for the desert. We like to go up one tooth in the front which is equivalent to down three teeth in the rear, which get, increases our top speed. Now, when you go up one tooth in the front, what's gonna happen is the bike's gonna feel a little bit more doggy off the line. Slower. But you're gonna be able to rev up higher to those higher RPMs and have higher top speed when you're out there with the throttle pinned wide open. And the gears will, will actually be longer. You're gonna be able to run the gears out for a longer period of time before you have to shift versus going up a bunch of teeth in the rear. Your gears are gonna be real short but the bottom end is going to be right there. So when it comes to gear ratios, gearing up and gearing down, it can be quite confusing. So when you put a larger sprocket on your bike, that's called gearing down. But if you're adding more teeth and making it larger, wouldn't it be called gearing up? Super confusing. You're, you're, you're going up in teeth, but essentially you're gearing down. So say you're running your stock set of sprockets. This front sprocket has to go around a certain number of times in order for this rear sprocket to make one revolution. If you were to gear down, if you will, and add teeth to the rear, say you add two or three teeth to that rear sprocket, the same number of revolutions of this front sprocket, you're not even gonna get a full revolution of that rear. Yep, so that's gear ratio. I know it's super confusing. When I say I'm gonna gear down, I like to think of it as I'm basically gearing down my top speed, giving myself some more ump out of the corner, some more punch, some more bottom end. Nice, and then again, when you're gearing up, what you're doing is you're looking for that more top end. Yeah, you're, you're looking to go smaller sprocket in the rear so you get longer pulls out of each gear and a higher top speed. I'm gearing up. I'm trying to go up in top speed, but I'm going down in teeth. So other than performance, why would you change your chain and sprocket? Well, I think there's really two reasons. Number one, if your stock stuff is beat to crap and looks like this, it's probably time for a new set of chain and sprockets. Number two, if you want some bling, from the factory, sprockets eh, pretty much look like this. Yeah. If you want to have a killer looking setup that either matches your bike or contrasts your bike color, that's a great way to go as well. Yep. And probably the third reason, <laughs> wait. This sprocket right here weighs 1.8 pounds. It is heavy. Where this guy here weighs in at 0.8 pounds. That's saving a pound of weight okay. off of your rotating mass just by changing the sprockets. And when you're racing, weight is horsepower. So why is this sprocket so much heavier? It's made of steel. So most street bikes are gonna come with a steel sprocket, but a common upgrade is to go aluminum on sport bikes and things of that nature, just to save that weight, to reduce the rolling resistance. Yeah, you're right. 
and most dirt bikes come with an aluminum sprocket, but it's not hard anodized. Pro Taper and Renthal and other sprocket companies like to hard anodize their aluminum sprocket, keep some lightweight, but it also adds some strength. And strength means longevity and more miles or hours that you're gonna get out of your components. So let's move on to the different styles of chains. So chains come in three basic sizes. You have a 520, a 525, and a 530 are the most common. And that goes for all big bikes, which would be 125cc and up. The smaller bikes like 85s and 65s tend to use 420 size chains or 415. In addition to chain sizing, we also have how the chain is made. We have chains that are standard chains with no O-rings. We have O-rings, we have X-rings. There's lots of different options when it comes to putting a chain on your motorcycle. Yeah, you're right, and there's different colored chains as well. You've got your standard chain, you've got red, blue, green. I know companies offer those as well. Personally, I like the gold chain. It's, it's used with a different material and it's gonna last the longest. Now, a very common question that we get, Travis, is should I replace just my chain or do I need to replace my chains and sprockets at the same time? It's very important to change your chain and your sprockets at the same time because that's gonna give you the longest life for your parts. Now, why is that? The reason for that is, as you can see here on this blue and gold Pro Taper setup, the tolerances between the chain and the sprocket are super, super tight. Now, if you take a worn out chain and put that on the sprocket, it's gonna beat the sprocket up and wear it out super fast. Yep. Conversely, if you take a chain and try to put that onto an old set of sprockets, what's gonna happen there is there's gonna be a lot of slop there and that chain is just gonna get torn up really quickly. All right, so what we're looking at here on this worn out sprocket is the fact that the top of these teeth are super thin compared to how thick they were originally. You can also see that they're scooped and scalloped and leaning one direction definitely worn down way more than the original. So if you were to put a brand new chain onto this old sprocket, you can see that the grooves are so large that the chain would wiggle within in between them, wearing the chain out faster than usual. I actually have this same exact setup that we have on the table on my 2018 YZ450F, and I have exceptional life out of it. When I say that, I'm getting like 15 plus hours out of my chain and sprockets. Now, speaking of hours, Travis, I just learned from RK that they actually have a 20,000 mile warranty on their street bike chains and sprog kits. Well, on the topic of RK chains and that 20,000 mile warranty, RK chains puts together a nice kit. This gives you your correct sprockets for the correct gear ratio you're looking for and a chain all in one convenient kit. Yeah, and you'll notice that the kit prices are usually a little bit cheaper than buying all the parts individually. And another reason I like the kits is the fact that they're set up year make model specific, so you just can't go wrong. Yeah, so if you do really like your stock gearing, pick up an RK kit and you're ready to go. If you're looking to gear up, go ahead and add a tooth in the front if you have room, or take away a couple teeth in the rear. And if you're looking to gear down, you would take a tooth away from the front or add some in the rear. That's it chains and sprockets. They can be a little bit confusing. They can be a little bit daunting. If you have any questions at all, please call our 800 number on the website, or you can ask a Q&A question on the website. Just click on the product, hit Q&A, put your question in, and I'll probably be the guy that answers it. Or leave us a comment down below because I honestly confused myself while making this video. I'm always on YouTube. Kyle is as well. We'll see your comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our video. So I'm really curious guys, are you running stock gearing? Have you geared up? Have you geared down? How did you learn about initial chain and sprocket gearing? Or is this the first time you've ever delved into chain and sprocket 101? I'd love to know, so please leave a comment. Please leave a comment down below. Myself and Kyra on YouTube all the time, and we'd love to answer your questions. Don't forget to visit shatmoto.com, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Travis, this is Kyle. We'll see you guys next time. Ride safe.